The following program is a production of Truth For The World. Thank you for joining us again today on Ask the Expert. We have with us again Dan Cates. Dan is an instructor at the Memphis School of Preaching. He has a master's degree uh, in, in uh, Bible... B biblical Studies. All right, Biblical Studies from Ambridge University. He uh, teaches English and Greek at the Memphis School of Preaching as well as some other classes. And so he's qualified to teach us what we're going to be learning about today. We're uh, doing a series called Bible Gramming, and that's where we take Bible verses and diagram them to help us learn uh, from the English language what the Bible says. And uh, so we've been introducing some English terms, and we are uh, finished with adverbs the last, uh, the last show, and now we're going to do, uh, what, what, what do we have in store for today? We're today? going to talk about prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Okay. All right, well, let's just go ahead and get started with the prepositions then. Okay. Prepositions, like the name would indicate, are words which are prepositioned by uh, other words so that they can help to serve as a part of speech. An example of a preposition uh, would be, let me write preposition up here. You see preposition. An example of a preposition would be a word like of, and your word which it is prepositioned before might be the word box. So the preposition uh, would be of, the object of the preposition would be box, and then you might have a word that helps to fill that, what we call a prepositional phrase, the uh, uh, of the box. This would be an adjective modifying box, this would be the object of the preposition, okay. and this would be the preposition itself. Now there are many prepositions, and a lot of words which you may not consider prepositions are prepositions. Generally speaking, we, we teach that a preposition is uh, easily identified if you can think about a, re a relationship which a mouse or something like that can have mm -hmm. with a box. Right. The mouse can be on the box, the mouse can be with the box, the mouse can be beside the box, the mouse can be around the box. And there are even some which don't make as much sense such as the mouse can be because of the box right. and the mouse can be in spite of the box. Right. But those are all prepositions. And what these prepositions do is they begin prepositional phrases the whole phrase of which can serve as another part of speech. For instance, if we are talking about uh, in the house, let's say we went in the house or into the house, perhaps would be even better. What this is doing, it's answering the question, where? Where did we go? Well, let's put this into, into the house. So into is a preposition, house is the object of the preposition, and since it's answering the question where, this is an adverb phrase. Okay. You can also have prepositional phrases which are adjective phrases and prepositional phrases which are noun phrases. Okay. So these are prepositions. We did some looking last, uh, in the last two sessions at Hebrews 11. If we go to Hebrews 11, we see a great number of prepositions found in this particular chapter. We see, for instance, in verse 2, uh, for by it the elders obtained the good report. By it is answering a question there. It's answering the question, how? How did the elders find a good report? By it, and it is faith. Okay. So that's a prepositional phrase, and uh, these prepositional phrases are generally easy to identify. 
One thing which I teach the students at the School of Preaching is if they're trying to figure out their way through, through a sentence or through a Bible verse, one easy way to do that is to be able to go through the verse first of all, identify all the prepositions and their objects, and if they can sort of pull those out, then that leaves them with, with other parts of the sentence which may be a little bit more difficult to right. identify. Okay. Well, I can remember because uh, you taught me English as well, and so I can remember this very lesson, and <clears throat> one of the things that I remember these year, all these years later is what you said about the mouse in the box. And so uh, even when I had to fill in substitute when I was teaching at a place, I, I used that very phrase, anything that a mouse does with a box or can do to a box, his relationship to that box uh, is, a, is a good way to find your prepositions. And before we go too much further, I want to say this. Uh, you can go on to uh, katespublications.com and you can uh, download these uh, lessons that we're talking about. If you're having difficulty uh, following along, just uh, download those and, and uh, be able to help you out a li little bit better. Uh, katespublications.com, is that yes, right? Yes, okay. that's right. Okay, so go ahead. Sorry about interrupting. Oh, that's you. fine. That's fine. So those are, those are prepositions. They basically show the relationship of one word and its object to the rest of the sentence. Now, one thing which we should point out is that in Greek, and we've made mention a few times to uh, the Greek and you know, knowing the Greek and knowing the English, in Greek, the prepositions can be actually built into the words. So it may be the case that if you're reading the Greek New Testament, you may come to a word which uh, is one word in the Greek, and yet it may be three words in English, a preposition, an object, and perhaps something, okay. uh, something like an a or an built in with that preposition and object. So these words are built in, and we're going to talk in a bit about cases. We're going to mention that in English we have three cases. In Greek you have eight cases, okay. and that makes it sound like the Greek would be, uh, would be a lot more advanced. It's really not. Okay. Uh, in Greek you have, uh, you have several cases which we would just call prepositional phrases. For instance, in Greek, the genitive, that's, that's a prepositional phrase. That, that's the idea of of something, okay. of and then an object. You have the Greek case which is called uh, ablative, and the ablative likewise is a preposition. This one indicates from something. So this one's of something. Of. Okay. And this one is from. Okay. Then you have dative. Let me put an ellipsis there so that you know that that's starting a, a phrase. Dative in the Greek is like our preposition in, uh, not in, uh, two or four. All right. Two or four. We would liken that in the English to the indirect object or to a phrase beginning with two or four. Then you have instrumental. Instrumental is by or with. What is the instrument by which something happens? Okay. So this would be simply another type of prepositional phrase. And these are all Greek. Uh, these are all Greek. Greek, Greek terms. Okay. And then you have locative which, as the name would indicate, has to do with location. Okay. And that is where the N comes into the picture. So if somebody is uh, studying English and knows Greek, or somebody knows English and is studying Greek, what he'll be able to see is that these five cases, while they look perhaps more advanced, they're just prepositional phrases. Okay. And we'll talk more about that when we actually talk about the phrases and when we start applying these things to actually right. studying Bible verses in it. Right. Now, you told me that, <clears throat> that right now we're just learning the rules, but as we apply these things and we, we start Bible gramming or diagramming the, the, the sentences, uh, a lot of this will actually you know, mesh together, right? That's right. It, right now, we're, we're just in the beginning stages. We're getting a lot of terms. Right. And it, it's like when you have, uh, let's say you're assembling a piece of furniture and you have all the different pieces laid out. At first it just looks like a jumbled mess. Uh -huh. But when you're getting a little bit into the process and you're starting to get a frame built and you're starting to get some screws put through the 
through the pieces of wood, okay. things start to take shape. Okay. And right now we, we have what may look like a jumbled mess. We've, we've learned some of these basic terms. All right. But as we begin to put these together, and especially around the, a sentence diagram frame, right. uh, that will help us to really appreciate what these parts of speech are doing and how they relate to each okay. other. So if we're getting lost, let's just, uh, let's just remember it's going to come together pretty soon. And uh, also you have those things on, on the website that you, can, that you can also download to help you if you're, if you're confused or uh, having a hard time following, right? That's right. All right, so what do we have next? Okay, next would be conjunctions. Conjunctions. And again, th this is a, a part of speech which the word itself helps to identify what it is going to be. You see in the word conjunction basically two words or a prefix and a word. You see the word con and you see the word junction. Con means with. Mm -hmm. It can also mean against, but in this word it means with. And junction, well, that carries the idea of joining, to join. So when you're using a conjunction, you are joining one thing, or maybe more than one thing, with another or with others. Okay. And there are actually three different types of conjunctions. All right. You have what are called coordinating conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions. Again, we have to look at the word. Co means equal. And ordinating means order or rank. So coordinating conjunctions join things of equal rank, okay. equal grammatical rank. So if one thing is joined to another thing with, say, and, it means those two things are equal. Okay. And there are actually eight coordinating conjunctions. So what would, what would a, a verse, do you know a verse off the top of your head maybe that we could use a, an example of this. Certainly. Uh, Mark 16, 16 okay. is a verse which shows the use of a coordinating conjunction. He that believeth and is baptized okay. shall be saved. So he that believeth and. not shall be damned. Okay. The and, he that believeth and is baptized, shows that there is a grammatical equality between believeth and is baptized, okay. showing those things are of, of the same rate, rank in this sentence, they are equally necessary. Okay. He that believeth and is baptized. And once we get these basic terms down, we can even diagram that okay. so that it will be readily seen okay, that great. those things are, okay. are equal. Your coordinating conjunctions and in that sentence uh, also include but, for, or, nor, yet, and so. Okay. So those are your basic uh, coordinating conjunctions. Then a second group of conjunctions is similar to this as far as its wording goes. You have again the word ordinating, which again means order. But what would sub mean? Well, think of a submarine. Submarine is something which is under the water. So subordinating, instead of joins, joining things which are of equal order or rank, joins something which is of an, a lesser or an under order or rank to something which is, which is maybe on a higher, higher grammatical level or of a higher grammatical weight. Okay. Subordinating conjunctions would include words like when or therefore or consequently okay. or because. Uh, even uh, that can be used in this way or so that. Uh, that was one of those words that can be used a number of different ways. We saw yesterday that being used, mm -hmm. or we saw in an earlier episode that being used as a relative pronoun. Right, right. So subordinating conjunctions. An example of a subordinating conjunction would be something along the line of, uh, when I got hungry, I ate lunch. Well, I ate lunch is of a higher grammatical rank. It's, it's an independent clause. Okay. We'll identify clauses in a short while. When I was hungry is of lesser rank. So it's answering a question, when. Okay. It's serving as effectively an adverb to right. I ate lunch. And then the third type of conjunctions are correlative conjunctions. And again, we can get something from the name. 
uh, with and related. This is when two words are used or two or more words are used to serve as conjunctions. This is where either or, neither, nor, okay. uh, not only, but also, that's where those words come into the play. Okay. For instance, neither John nor Fred went to the market. Okay. That would be a, a neither nor uh, correlative conjunction type of situation. Correlative conjunctions are basically coordinating conjunctions in, in use. Okay. They're joining things of equal rank. Now one thing which I might add uh, regarding conjunctions, and we hinted at this when we talked about uh, the subordinating conjunction and, and the answering of the question, when. A conjunction can join words, or a conjunction can join phrases, or a conjunction can join clauses. Okay. So they're not limited to, to joining simply uh, two words together. And we'll see that when we get into the verses themselves. So it can, only, it can do words and whole sentences or ideas, right? That's thoughts. right. Okay. That's right. Okay, whole good. thoughts. Uh, generally, you don't want to join sentences with conjunctions. Oh, right. Uh, but, but clauses, certainly, okay. and we'll identify those in just a moment. Okay, good, good. Thanks for clarifying that. Yes, sir. Sure. All right. So we've uh, talked a little bit about prepositions, and then this is conjunctions. Is there more yes, on conjunctions? or? Is uh, there, no, is that's, that's, those are the basics regarding okay. conjunctions. All we'll right. see them come into the play uh, some more, though. Okay, good. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do some of that when we diagram. So what, what do we have then after this? The final of the parts of speech is an interjection. And an interjection is a word which shows feeling or emotion, uh, generally strong emotion. Right. When we think about an interjection, if we were writing an interjection, we could have an interjection and then a comma following it, or we could have an interjection and then an exclamation mm -hmm. following it. And the difference between those two is one is weak and one is strong. For instance, you might uh, stub your toe and you might say, Al, that hurt. Okay. Or uh, you may uh, hit, hit, your, uh, hit your funny bone and say, Al, that hurt. You might even laugh a little bit while you're doing it. Or it could be the case, maybe you're playing football right. and, and somebody hits you and you say, Ouch! Uh -huh. yeah, that, that would be when the, uh, when the exclamation point comes into play. So these show strong feeling, emotion, things of that nature. And you do see these from time to time in Scripture. Uh, by far, the most used interjection in Scripture is one which was used often by the Lord, and that is the word amen, which actually in the Greek it looks exactly the same or sounds exactly the same, amen, uh, as amen. What this means is verily or so be it. You may remember that sometimes Jesus would be teaching and he would say amen or verily. Right. Well, this is, this is a, a, an interjection. He's interjecting emotion. An interjection has no grammatical relation to the rest of the sentence. Okay. And so really any, any word which shows feeling could serve as an interjection. Okay. Okay, great. So this is the, uh, the basic parts of speech, um, and so we have a few minutes left. Do you want to uh, do a rehearsal of what we've learned, or, or would okay. you want to move to something different? Certainly. We, we can go over what we've, what we've just said, and we might even start showing some of the rudiments okay. of, of the diagram itself. We talked about nouns and pronouns. Nouns and pronouns can serve as any number uh, of parts of a sentence. And we make a distinction between parts of speech and parts of a sentence. Okay. For instance, nouns and pronouns can serve as subjects. They can serve as objects. We'll identify these terms in more detail in just a few moments. Uh, they can serve as, as predicate nominatives, which again, we, we'll identify those in just a moment. So there's several different roles which can be played by nouns and pronouns, and it's even the case that you could have a noun or pronoun 
being used as an adjective to describe something else. Okay. For instance, a fire truck. What type of truck was it? It was a fire truck. We mentioned uh, adjectives. And the adjectives were words which would describe or modify nouns and pronouns. Okay. And then we mentioned verbs. Verbs, as you'll remember, are words which show action or express a state of being. Right. And we mentioned that some verbs are not what they seem. So sometimes like. we might think something is a verb and, and it's really not. And we'll talk about that more in detail okay. when we start thinking about what we call verbals. Okay. Verbals are things which look like verbs right. and may even be verb forms, but they're being used as other parts of speech. Now, not, every, not everything that looks like a verb would fall into that category. Yesterday, for instance, or in the former session regarding right. Noah, yeah, yeah. we mentioned that Noah was the builder of the ark. And yes, the word build is a verb, but you can't builder something. Right. And okay. so that, that doesn't fall into this word, uh, this, this, type of, uh, uh, this type of description by itself. But there are words which could be verbs, could be something else. So you have to be careful about okay. identifying those. All right. And then we mentioned adverbs. Adverbs are words which modify verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. Now, nouns and pronouns can be used as these things. Adjectives, they're just adjectives. Verbs, they're just verbs. Adverbs, they're just adverbs. Now, the prepositional phrases uh, we mentioned prepositions earlier. Prepositional phrases would be the prepositions and any words which are associated with them. Right. That would include the object and any modifiers, right. any adjectives which might be found okay. within that phrase. Prepositions, we said, can be used as nouns as or prepositional phrases. Nouns, uh, adjectives, describing subjects, objects, uh, predicate nominatives, and so forth, or as adverbs. All right. So they can be used to modify verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. These are prepositions. We mentioned conjunctions. Conjunctions are words which join other words or groups of words. And then last, we mentioned interjections. Interjections are words which show emotion. Okay, so now these are, the, these are the parts of speech or parts of the sentence? These are parts of speech. Okay, these are parts of speech. And yes, all of these also are on that website. If they choose to go and download, then, then there's plenty of information, right? That's right. Them. Okay. And, and we have examples on those, on those sheets which we've printed up. Uh, th these are the, the most basic things. Right. But without these, we're not going to have an appreciation right. of the more advanced things. And so, and so just like with any other thing that you do or any other lesson that you learn, you have to start very basics first. And then, uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit more advanced uh, as we go along. Uh, what, what do we know? Uh, what would you say the most important thing about the English language, uh, why we're doing Bible gramming, for instance, why is it important for us to, to learn all of this in order to read our Bibles, study our Bibles? Well, there, there are many places in Scripture where if we just take the, th the things the way that, they are, they're, that they're worded, you may have a sentence, for instance, by Paul, which is five verses long. Right. If we're just reading through there and we don't have an appreciation uh, of what these words can mean with relation to each other, then we can be lost very easily in that sentence. Right. Uh, there are some sentences, for instance, written by Paul where uh, you'll begin in, in one verse and you'll have a subject, and then there will be three or four verses which are phrases modifying the subject or maybe what we would call parenthetical expression, just providing extra material. And then five verses later, you have the verb for this subject. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so you might have a great gulf between subject and okay. verb, and you may be looking for the verb up in the first, right. first sentence, and, and if you don't understand what these parts of speech are and how they relate to each other, right. uh, you can be thrown off very easily well, trying I remember to understand just, them. Even in our, one of the conversations in a previous show that we 
I talked about Acts uh, chapter 2, Acts chapter 1 also, where it says, and they were all gathered together in one place. And we said, well, who's the they? And so yeah, that was uh, even nice that we could, just using uh, these things that, that you just taught, you know, just go back and find the, the nearest preposition, even, I mean, the nearest... Uh, mod antecedent. Antecedent, that's yes. the word. And, uh, but then you said it doesn't always work that way. So, so we're going to have to learn these things before we can, I guess, move on to the more advanced stages. That's right. The next thing which we will want to do is to actually look at the sentence and see sentence parts. Okay. Sentences being subject, con conjoining, uh, s combining subjects as well as verbs, uh, direct objects, indirect objects, predicate nominatives, predicate adjectives, and we'll have to figure out uh, when we can look for direct objects and indirect objects. Okay. When we can look for predicate nominatives and predicate adjectives. Okay. So, uh, just to sort of set up the next series of shows, what, what do we have in store uh, maybe for the next couple shows so that we can uh, hopefully get, get some uh, extra interest in what's going to be happening here? Okay. All right. The next things which we're, we're going to want to do are to identify just how subjects and their verbs fit together. Okay. Remember, there are different types of verbs. You have action verbs and you have linking verbs. Okay. Now, your action verbs are going to take an object, which means something is going to be receiving the action. Uh, we mentioned yesterday they could be intransitive, which means that there's still action, but there's not going to be an object. If they take an object, that is, if something is receiving the action, then that will be a uh, that will be a direct object. Okay. If an action is being performed for somebody, and the preposition for or to is not expressed, then you're dealing with an indirect object. But those are only with action verbs. Okay. We're going to talk about linking verbs as well. The linking verbs are the verbs which tie the subject to something describing. Okay. Subject, and that's where predicate nominatives and predicate adjectives come in. Well, that's great, and we're looking forward to uh, spending more time with Dan. Uh, we are here on Ask the Expert, and it's good that he's here explaining these things because uh, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to, but I'm certainly glad that Dan's here with us. And we invite you to come back next time as we study more about uh, the English language and the Holy Bible as we uh, look more about Bible Grammy. If you would like to learn more about God's Word with a free Bible correspondence course, then write us at Truth for the World, P.O. Box 5048, Duluth, Georgia, 30096, the United States of America, or visit us online at tftw.org. The preceding program was a production of Truth for the World, a work of the Duluth Church of Christ.